Good evening, everyone. My name is Paul Young. I'm just going to walk you through an argument that's been ongoing for the last uh, year or so. In, in Canada's case, about fiscal mismanagement of the economy, basically under the Conservative Government of Canada. So I'm going to cover a multitude of issues to kind of lay out the, the details and facts to support what's actually happened to Canada. My presentation is basically only one view of the economy. It's my opinion. It doesn't necessarily mean I'm right or wrong, but it's really my opinion, what I believe about the numbers, and including the economy. As myself, I'm 25 years in, in finance, so I've got a background in academia, industry, financial solutions. I understand what it takes to compete. I understand the role of government. I also understand what's required as part of expan expansion for a business. I'll talk about growth rates and I'll talk a lot about the economy itself. I'll talk about factors that drive the economy, but really it's, this agenda is really about talking about the economy as a whole. Now I pulled this report from the Bank of Nova Scotia and they run this monthly and you're more apt to go out to the Scotia Bank and look at the Scotia Bank economics. And what you're going to see here is they trend and did averages up to 2014. If you look at Canada, its growth rates between 2000 and 2014 were 2.2%. And you look at the past few years in terms of our growth rates are 1.2, 1.3%. So we've seen a sluggish time. Now, in 2015, we've seen a huge drop in oil prices in Canada is a huge energy producer. But that being said, oil is not the only factor driving the economy. So you need to keep that in fa fact, keep that in perspective. The other thing that we need to understand too is there's been a huge shift in terms of demographics. In the 90s, we've seen a lot more of the baby boomers spending money, supporting their families more. Well, they've now shifted more and more into retirement, so they're looking at different ways of spending money. That's also driving it. The U.S. economy itself was the last major economy to come out of the recession, and you're seeing that now where they're seeing the growth patterns now exceeding Canada, but that's because they fell a lot more, and I'll get into that in future, shop, future slides. The fourth point I want to make here is if you look at China, Canada is, now has two-way trade with China, about $31 billion. We're now seeing a 40, almost a 40% drop in GDP since 2000, on average, and since the 2014 trends. This shows you where GDP has come by provinces. So in 2010, we've been growing every year. Um, we had a slowdown in 2015, two quarters, but we actually still grew in 2015. This shows you what's happening by industry, and you'll see basically the mining sectors seen significant drop on the goods producing area. But in general, we've done quite well considering what's in play here. Um, with low oil prices, consumer spending was relatively strong last year, and you're seeing that by this particular chart as well. Now, you're going to hear a lot of spin. You're going to hear the topic always said Stephen Harper's job records are worse since the Depression. Well. First of all, when you're starting to look at things, you got to look at things at a factual level. You got to look at the details of what's happening in terms of the tr transposition of an economy. But what you're not seeing or hearing from when people talk, whether it's the trade unions, whether it's governmental officials, whoever, you're not seeing the facts of what's happening in terms of an economy. What you're seeing is the percentage of G GDP growth drop. If you look at Canada compared to the G G7, it drew. Its quarter drop in terms of recession part of GDP was dropped the smallest. But if you look at countries like U.S., United Kingdom, Italy, Germany, they all dropped a lot more. So their economies dropped more, so they had more slack to pick up than Canada actually did. So that's a misnomer that's not really discussed. The second thing is the 90s saw huge growth rates led by the baby boomers. So we saw double those rates, but that's not really ever discussed in terms of the demographic shift. So that's one thing you need to understand when you're starting to talk about trends. Now, if you ask it, concepts about basically a government's role, well, there's multiple roles what government does in terms of it sets trade investment policy. Canada is an export country, therefore it drives a lot of its economic wealth from exports. It also relies two-thirds of its economy on consumer spending. Now, consumer spending is going to be driven by taxation policy. So if you've got less tax home take-home pay, you see higher consumption taxes on goods and services, then that's going to impact on how much people spend in consumer spending, along with corporate taxation, because that gets priced out. Now, what you're not seeing here is a couple different economic policies, and I'll get into the final slide on government failures. 
But what you want to also understand here is government spends on infrastructure, but the infrastructure money also needs to be matched by the provinces and the municipalities. The federal government can give a, a lot of money to infrastructure, but if it doesn't go into uh, projects that make the most sense in terms of moving exports or transit projects that are actually going to make money, then you got to be then you got some significant issues and pressures on governments because if they've got projects in transit that aren't making any money, that can result in those those projects taking more money from the, the municipalities. Second point is you have to have some transparency on in infrastructure spending to make sure it's doing it. Another point here is regulations. Environmental assessments, this is the process to get things done. We have a lot of people that are fighting pipelines and fighting different things. For whatever reason, don't want those exports to go to the market, and yet they're critical to drive government revenue. Second thing, provincial policies. The governments of provinces by the Constitution have control over natural resources and hydro rights. So if those co provinces don't set the proper policies around hydro rights and natural resources, then that's impacting the competitiveness of the economy. That's competitiveness is impacting investment. Investment's impacting GDP growth, which is not discussed. The other thing that should have been in here too as well, and I'll touch base on this, internal trade barriers are causing a significant amount of billion dollar, billion dollars of loss every year. That's money that could still flow into the economies. The provinces got together and broke down barriers. And that's another thing that should be discussed. Why do governments fail? Well, they rely too much on Keynesian economics, which is overstimulating the economy. You have to have the right balance of policy. is putting money into the economy, but gradually pulling out that as the private sector gets stronger. That's one of the critical things. Governments also failed in the past when they do grants and bailouts. Yes, it's a political decision to bail the automotive industry or aerospace, but you got to be careful what you do here because some businesses have to be able to have the proper business models to succeed. If a business is going to fail, it's going to fail. It doesn't need government propping it up for a few years and then fail anyway. So there needs to be a more proper decision on business cases when you're looking at providing significant funding to businesses to help them, help them survive or compete. High deficits, high debts. Yes, Harper rolled things and he had to put a stimulus in play. But government, he also brought government spending under control by putting restraint in on payroll and different aspects of government. He also enforced value for money more in terms of delivery of program spending. Okay, He also tried to keep a lid on the growing size of government. Now, if you take a step forward and look at provinces like Ontario, they've actually grown their public sector strong, higher than they've grown the private sector. That's not sustainable. And at some point, you're going to end up having to borrow to support your operational activities. And that's not a good thing for government. Some point, government has to get lean and mean, but it has to pick its battles in terms of what it wants to do. The reason why I did this presentation is there's a lot of smear campaign going around, track records of government's fiscal management. Really what you have to look at in a general statement is you've got to go beyond just the overall hyperbole or just the overall facts and go into the details because you got to, to compare error to error, you have to compare it in that the errors make sense in terms of the data and that has not compa been compared. It's all talked at an overall level to put more fear to people that the current government's policies aren't working. Thank you.